So here we're going to look at how to get some information from the graph of a function. So given these two functions, we're going to find the domain and range, the intercepts, and any symmetry, either to the x-axis, to the y-axis, or to the origin. So we'll start with the first graph here. And we want to find the domain and range of this graph. And do notice that this is, in fact, the graph of a function. Uh, if we draw a vertical line that goes right through these two points, this open circle means that this is a point not included on that curve. And this closed circle means that point is included. So a vertical line can pass through here but still only hit this one point here. So it is, in fact, a function. So what we want to do is find the domain of this function. Remember the domain is asking us about the x values. So what we're doing is we're looking at all the x values that are being used. So you can you know, focus on the number line here and think about all of the values on this number line that have an image on the graph. And if we think about the smallest x value that would be used if we imagine extending our x-axis and extending this graph, uh, it would keep going to the left as far as we can imagine. Even though it is also going downward, it is moving to the left. So our x values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now our x values as we go to the right are getting larger and larger. So even when we get here, we have an x value uh, that is being used for this point, although it is not being used for this point because this point is, is like a hole in the graph. So we don't have any space in between our x values. Everything is being used, including that point. And if we continue from there, moving to the right, we do have images on this portion of the graph. So our x values are getting as large as we can possibly imagine. So eventually we use all possible x values. We have all real numbers. So as an interval, we can write that as negative infinity to positive infinity. And there are other ways that we can write domain. We could express that as a set and just say the set of all x such that x is a real number. Um, but an interval is a nice way for us to state that information very concisely. All right, let's take a look at the range. So for the range, we're looking at the y values. So we want to look at all the y values that are being used. And um, this is also called the image of the function. Uh, so here we're looking at any y values that are being used for this particular graph. So let's look at this piece of the function first. Uh, we want to know what are the smaller, what is the smallest y value that's being used. So if we continue this graph and extend it, it is going downward. And again, we're focusing on the downward motion because we're looking at y values, values that are going to fall on the vertical axis. So we are going to eventually get to negative infinity as far as the y values are concerned because we're going further and further down the y axis. So we get to a point here where we have this y value of 1, that's for this point, and then we jump to get to the next piece of that graph. So for all of the y values in here between 1 and 2, there are actually no points that have an image on this function. So we are only using the values from negative infinity to 1, and then we're picking up again at 2, even though 2 is not included, we're starting at that value, we're going to go upward from there and then hit all of the y values to positive infinity. So our range will have two pieces, which means we're going to write two intervals. The first interval represents the smallest that y can possibly be, which is negative infinity and that goes up to positive 1 and since that point is included we're using a bracket around the 1 and we're joining that with the interval that picks up at 2 and goes to positive infinity. Notice that the 2 has parentheses around it because it's not included in the image of this function uh, which is kind of 
there as a starting point for us so we get as close to two as we possibly can um, from the larger side of two. And we're using this union symbol to join these two intervals together. We're either in this interval or we're in this interval. All right, the next thing we want to do is talk about the intercepts. And we're focusing on x and y intercepts. There's only two uh, intercepts we can possibly find. We may or may not have x and y intercepts. Uh, in this case, we're looking at the x-axis and looking for anywhere the graph crosses the x-axis. And we do have a point right here. And that's at the uh, ordered pair 1, 0. So we will have an x-intercept. And that x-intercept is 1, 0. Zero. Let me get that down on the paper here. Here we go. Next, looking for the y-intercept, we're looking for any place where this graph is going to cross the y-axis, and we seem to have one here. We're just going to approximate where that is, uh, so it's halfway between zero and negative one. Uh, so that would be a approximately negative one-half. So we have the y-intercept, zero, negative one-half. Now the last thing we want to do is test for symmetry. Uh, we can test a graph for symmetry by thinking about folding the graph or uh, turning the graph, depending on what type of symmetry we're looking for. So in this case, uh, if we're looking for symmetry with the x-axis, we would imagine if we folded this graph along this x-axis, would the top half match up with the bottom half? And that would not be the case. Uh, for y-axis, we would do the same thing. Imagine folding the graph along the y-axis. Would the right side match up with the left side? And it would not. Uh, for symmetric to the origin, if we were to turn this graph upside down, would it look exactly the same as it does right side up? And just a quick turn of your head uh, would show you that that does not happen in this case. Uh, so we have no symmetry uh, for this function. All right, taking a look at our second example, we're going to answer the same three questions. Uh, so I just wanted to, my graph was a little off here, that it should be touching the uh, x-axis there. So just pretend that it was like that. All right, so let's look at the domain first. Again, we're thinking about how far to the left this graph goes to how far to the right does it go. And it goes as far left as negative 3, including that point. But then it continues to the right to positive infinity. And remember, with infinity, we always use parentheses. Now for the range. We're looking at how far down this graph goes to how far up it goes. Now it goes as far down as 0. It hits uh, a y value of 0 here and also here. And then it goes up to positive infinity. Even though it goes up, comes back down, it swings up again, all of the y values from 0 and up are being used. And that's all the range is asking. All right, secondly, we're looking for intercepts. Uh, we have two x-intercepts here. First one at negative 3, so that's the point negative 3, 0. And the second one is here, that's at 2, 0. The y-intercept, we have 1. And if this is a function, you cannot have more than one y-intercept. Uh, in this case, we have a y-intercept at 0, 2. Again, using the same methods for testing for symmetry, folding, or turning the graph upside down, we see that we have no symmetry uh, either with the x, the y-axis, or with the origin. Okay, so that concludes our short little lesson on how to get some information from the graph of a function. Hope you enjoyed it.